my name is Hardik Singh, and I am a product manager at Happy Robotics. This video will talk about what it means to use joint level control in the context of robotic arms. Over the course of this video, we will be covering what is joint level control. And then after that, we'll take a look at what joint level control looks like in practice. And this will involve playing with a live robot arm. What is joint level control? The same robot can be controlled in different ways, and, and a lot of these principles count for uh, more than just a robotic arm. But for today, we will take a look at what that means for uh, an arm that you might have. You'll often hear something called system or task level control. This would involve uh, the controller on the right uh, telling the arm to move forward, up, backwards, and uh, in, in certain ways that require the arm to move as a system or complete a task. The difference from uh, joint level control is that in joint level control, you are actually having that controller for each individual joint in the arm. So you're not just saying, uh, telling the arm to move its end effector forward. What you will actually be saying is listen, telling each individual joint, you'll be talking to each individual joint and be telling it to go to a new position uh, with a certain velocity acceleration. And another cool thing there is that you can do cl closed loop control over that motion. At a, at a joint level. For each and every joint, you can optimize its behavior, optimize its motion, and the way in which it executes its functions. Uh, but the best way to take a look at this is to see it in action. And so let's switch over to playing with a physical live robot arm. Let's take a look at what joint level control looks like with a physical robot arm. Here I have a six degree of freedom heavy arm, and there are six joint actuators, each representing one of those degrees of freedom. With these six degrees of freedom, I should be able to operate in 3D space quite comfortably. And what I'm going to be showing today is what it looks like uh, when we're tracking some of the feedback and the commands from this arm to see each actuator being independent of the other. To do this, it's let's dive right into it and let's look at the position feedback we're receiving from the base actuator and one of the wrist actuators. At the base, I have just started plotting the position feedback we're receiving from the base actuator, and so that's this first graph. The second graph is going to be for wrist two. We call wrist two, uh, we call the three actuators that are wrist, wrist one, wrist two, and wrist three. So wrist two is this degree of freedom when I move the second last actuator in the chain. You'll see on the right hand side graph how as I'm moving wrist two, the position feedback is appropriately varying. But you'll also notice how on the left graph, the base actuator's position has not changed. I'm receiving the feedback from wrist two independent of what I'm receiving from the base actuator. So this is an example of what joint level control looks like when you're receiving feedback. I can also change the scenario by flipping it. So I'm keeping wrist two the same now, and I'm going to just move the actuator along the horizontal plane, which is what base one controls. And you'll see now the feedback for base one uh, for the base is alternating, not base one, just base, but the wrist two is remaining the same. And so this is what it looks like to receive feedback at an independent level, uh, at a joint level, uh, even though they're both being used as a part of a greater system. Another way we can display the usefulness of joint level control is by having the arm move through a certain motion and tweaking the control gains at a actuator level, at a joint level. And we'll notice how you don't need to be changing the control gains for an entire system to be improving the motion of the arm. So let's look at that by teaching this arm a certain behavior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really focus on the behavior being horizontal. And so a lot of uh, the motion will be experienced by the base actuator in particular. So here, I'm going to have the arm first look to the back, and I'm going to have it look to the camera. Once I've done that, I'm gonna have the arm start replaying these positions. And the first thing to notice here, uh, and once again, this is showing the independence of joint level control and feedback, is that you can see on the graphs how on the left graph, the base is going through a wider range of motion in its position values, and wrist two is going through a much smaller range. And this is another example of how the actuators are being commanded differently, appropriate to what is needed at that joint. And that's another example of how joint level control allows you to separate uh, the different types of commands you need per joint. Now, going back to what I talked about with control gains, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cause a disturbance in the motion of the arm. 
Now that disturbance is really felt here at the base actuator, where there's a lot of oscillation as the arm tries to return to its desired position. You can actually see that in the graphs as well, in terms of how the dotted line is what we're hoping to be commanding, and the continuous line is the feedback we're receiving, which is actually going through a lot of oscillations to get back to the commanded position. What One of the reasons that it's taking so many oscillations is because if I look over here at the Gains tab for the base module, we have a fairly high uh, P gain for the position control that we're sending. What I can do here is I can just set a smaller P, uh, P, P gain value. And as I send that over and I return to the graphs, I can cause that same disturbance and find that we are able to return to the uh, desired position much more quickly. So even just looking at the physical motion of the arm, we're not overshooting as many times in turn and oscillating uh, uncontrollably. And this is an example of how my understanding of the system, uh, I was able to apply my understanding of the system to be able to improve the entire motion of what the arm is experiencing. And being able to control things, both in terms of receiving feedback as well as sending commands at a joint level, allows me to be able to do far more sophisticated things than sending the same commands uh, throughout the system and uh, not being able to kind of zero in on each joint's uh, individual controls. Um, and so this has been a quick uh, run through of the kind of things that you can do with joint level control.